Well, so that's what you had, uh, how they debated that. We've got uh, Dr. Tunji Abayemi here with us, a legal practitioner. Thank you for coming on this morning, Thank Dr. You. Well, we saw the passion with, with which the uh, lawmakers were debating the the bill. Did, yeah. And you thought that, oh dear, they, they take this very seriously. But yes. the SGF has been speaking about this one, saying, yes. look, uh, he's disappointing many of them, saying that, that they are so passionate about yes. that constituency project not implementable. Yes. And you think the SGF, he won't be in the good books of the senators at this point, but his, he said, look, if we're running at 40% loss, he seems to say, look, I'm sorry, we can't implement it. Mm -hmm. But that shouldn't be the response of the SGF. Uh, the SGF should have responded appropriately. Constituency project is unconstitutional. There's no room for it. That's what he should have told oh. the Even National Assembly. Wow, oh, that, that's uh, open up another chapter yes. entirely now. Yes. But you know, they, they argued all this uh, some time ago, but even though they say if it's in the budget, yes. does this still make it unconstitutional? It shouldn't be in the budget. Uh, let us understand, first and foremost, Okay. How did the constituents? Doctor, yes. Just give us a minute. We'll okay. take a quick break okay. and then we'll come in and sink our teeth into this one. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily, Dr. Tunja Bahimi. You were going to talk about the fact that, yes, it may be uh, in the constitution, beg your pardon, in the budget, yes. but it still doesn't make it constitutional. Unconstitutional. Now, let us first of all understand how did constituency come into the legislative affair? There's no other reason except for corruption it is unconstitutional and it's not the first time not development not has nothing to do with development first and foremost let us understand it's not the first time in 2001 it was a major issue in fact they threatened to impeach the president because they were claiming that Obasanjo refused to execute constituency projects. They were the people that put these projects in the budget. On that occasion, I was working on this book. I wrote to Pius and him on the same issue. And my letter was on June 14, 2002. And I raised two questions. And those two questions are as follows. Uh, he, he was the Senate president. He was then the Senate president. And I said, we are asked to consider whether the legislative firm was right to, one, create or insert expenditure heads or projects and allocate money for the newly created expenditure heads or projects in the national budget, what they call the constituency allowance. Secondly, legislatively increase the money allocated by the executive in the 2002 budget to an amount it deems fit and proper and for projects it intends. Now, you must understand the issue. Before, you, the, go, before you go further, yes. did, did you get a reply to that letter? No, I didn't get a reply. They never replied serious letters. <laughs> now, let us first of all understand the order of the Constitution. Section 81, the only law that is directed to be made in a particular manner is the Appropriation Act under Section 81. There is no other, in all other laws, the business of making law, the prerogative is solely that of the legislative house. But when it comes to the Appropriation Law, the Constitution says that the president must present his initiator budget estimate. The National Assembly must approve. The president must have project, budget heads. No other law in the entire history of legislating is given that kind but of But they power. say they have the power of the purse. Now, they have nothing like that. The power to budget, the power to budget is the exclusive prerogative of the president. You cannot budget and at the same time approve. 
let, let me let me let me ask you this because yes. uh, you're also an author uh, and a legal uh, yes. practitioner quickly because I started reading newspapers pretty early oh. and I still remember the era of uh, Al Hajj Show Shagari yes. at that point in time. Yes. That, what happened at that time? There was nothing like that because there was an assembly. You know, I was telling you just before we started, there was nothing like constituency project under Shagari regime. Mind you, the same constitution is what we are using now, largely the same constitution, you know, with minor amendments. There wasn't. The source of a constituency project is nothing but concrete, unadulterated pursuit of corrupting, corruptive money. And you see, the, the, the greatest enterprise, the greatest corrupt uh, enterprise. I think Malkwe is uh, trying to put a question across. Uh, Malkwe. Yes. There have been quite a number of issues raised here. I mean, Timberlain talked about the passion with which that uh, conversation took place or the debate yes. happened on the floor of the Senate. Yes. And reference was made to earlier comments by the SGF. I mean, yes. if you listen to one of the lawmakers, he did say uh, that this SGF seems to hate the members of the Senate. Don't you think that the comments that this is not legal or that it was unconstitutional could have provoked the members a little further was that would that have been a wise comment well that's precisely why the uh, secretary to the federal government uh, strategically said it's not implementable he knows very well that constituency project is unconstitutional you cannot budget an approved budget, it violates separation of powers. And the power to budget, the current... Was that the reason he made that comment? You said? So, what, what, what was that, was the, that the initial reason he, he made his first yes. comment? Yes! I mean, we've had the SGF talk about in, a number of issues in, in recent times. First, it was about the 2014 conference that happened uh, and, you know, how the federal government, it would seem, you know, regards the, 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 the report of, of, the, of the 2014 conference. We've also seen the comments of uh, Professor Balaji Akiyemi, who says that, you know, his comments were unbecoming of his office. So would you say that the lawmakers were, uh, you know, a little out of their weeds, especially when, when this particular matter has been settled through the debate that they've had on, on the budget? Wasn't it out of place? Well, it wasn't out of place. He's speaking for the government and for the people of Nigeria. He's an agent of the government collectively elected by the people of Nigeria. The corporate election, electability of the people of Nigeria elected one president in order to manage our affairs. The National Assembly's duty is merely to pass law is not to deal with the money or projects or execution. So how does it work if you say, uh, as uh, the representative of the people, this uh, uh, is the need of your constituents and your yes. constituency, uh, do you advise the executive, maybe state or national or federal government, to say, this is what I think my people need by way of lobbying so that that can be included? Precisely. All of that is discussed in my letter. Naturally, because of the interdependence of the three arms of government, you could have interest in development in your constituency.